Hello and welcome to Comic Drake, where I talk about comic books and my name is Drake. In comparison to DC Comics, Marvel characters get around a whole heck of a lot. And this is mostly because DC likes to focus on their official couples, their OTPs, whereas Marvel characters will take on multiple sexual partners. So today, let's take a look at the sexy, sexy, sexy world of Marvel Comics and look at some of the most surprising and interesting hookups over the years, in no particular order. It's not just clickbait, it's actually the subject of the video. Starting us out is one hookup that I have mentioned multiple times in the past, but it's a pairing that I seriously find interesting. Tony Stark is a ladies' man, there's no doubt about that. However, in 2013, Tony went off on several adventures in space, and much like Captain Kirk, he fooled around with several space ladies. Well, some of his attempted conquests were more successful than others, like the time that Stark was about to take an alien princess to bed. He opened up his mask, and she was disgusted by his facial hair. This actually wasn't the first time that an alien woman was attracted to Tony while his entire body was encased in armor, though. Fun fact, after the day was saved in the iconic Infinity Gauntlet event, he and the warrior Gamora flirted for a bit. This came full circle when Tony briefly joined the Guardians of the Galaxy and sealed the deal. But clearly Gamora wasn't impressed, and Tony was left in pain. No wonder it was so awkward between the two afterwards. Hey, remember that woman from Spider-Man Homecoming? You know, the one with a few lines and was in charge of the mostly unexplained Department of Damage Control? That's Anne Marie Hoag, and let's have a quick history lesson. Anne is the head of Damage Control, a private company that cleans up after superhuman scuffles, doing repair work for heroes and cities, but even for some villains like Doctor Doom as well. Miss Hoag is tough as the nails, able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in negotiations against Tony Stark, and even have a brief stint as an advisor to the President of the United States. Miss Hoag and Damage Control as a whole have never been too well known, and these days they're relegated to brief cameos. In one recent example, it was heavily hinted at that Anne and freaking Luke Cage actually have some sort of romantic past. This came completely out of left field, and was never elaborated on and never mentioned again. It's a strange bit of trivia that has been pretty quickly forgotten, kind of like damage control itself. Spider-Man has had two iconic love interests. There's Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy. However, it's been established that Peter and Gwen never did the deed, which is interesting when you consider who Gwen has slept with. Peter Parker's greatest nemesis, Norman Osborn, aka the Green Goblin. The Sins Past storyline, featured in Amazing Spider-Man number 509 to 514 in 2004, is highly controversial among comic fans, and even mentioning it is bound to get them riled up. Honestly though, it's easy to see why. Sins Past revolves around the fact that while Gwen was with Peter, she had an affair with Norman Osborn the father of her ex-boyfriend, and Peter Parker's best friend, Harry Osborn. If that wasn't enough, Gwen got pregnant with Norman's kids, and went off to Paris to have them delivered in secret. This also ended up retconning the motivation for Norman killing Gwen Stacy in that iconic scene, permanently tainting the entire Spider-Man section of the Marvel Universe. There is good reason why Spider-Man writers have gone on record stating that they would never touch or even reference this story. But until it's explicitly wiped from existence, Green Goblin's O-Face is still canon. Speaking of Spider-Man, it's pretty well known that Dr. Octopus tried marrying Aunt May back in the 70s, but the marriage never ended up happening. However, decades later, we were shown that the two of them consummated the union before the marriage itself. To make things even more disgusting, this was the storyline where Doc Ock swapped minds with Peter Parker just before deciding to become the superior Spider-Man. And during this process, Peter got a front row seat to that display. This makes the time that Peter walked in on his aunt way less intense by comparison. So hey, did you know that Wolverine and Squirrel Girl had a thing? Yeah, when Wolverine joined the New Avengers, their team leader, Luke Cage, decided to get a nanny for when he and Jessica Jones were going to be out fighting crime. After several interviews, it was decided that Squirrel Girl was the best candidate, which led to this incredibly awkward scene when she crossed paths with Wolverine. 
Now, despite this playing out like a couple of former lovers, this scene is a bit ambiguous. Maybe the two just had some poorly executed team-ups. Well, in Wolverine Volume 4 Number 8, Emma Frost explores Logan's mind and stumbles across a room of all of his sexual fantasies. Along with all the usual suspects, there's Squirrel Girl, front and center, making the hint that the two had a sexual relationship pretty much confirmed. Gross. One thing that's been great about the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that lesser-known characters are being exposed to a larger audience, two notable ones being Mantis and The Vision. Now, if you've watched this channel before, you know that I am not a big fan of Mantis. She's a writer's pet that was shoehorned into several stories, which includes her time as a member of the Avengers. During this period, Mantis had an established attraction to the Vision, but this was not explored too deeply. After all, she was in a relationship with a character named the Swordsman, who later died and was replaced by an alien plant guy who took on her deceased lover's form. Because comics. And Vision was in an established relationship with Scarlet Witch. Heck, both couples had simultaneous weddings right next to each other, with Vision getting hitched to Scarlet Witch and Mantis marrying the plant dude. However, Vision and Scarlet Witch eventually divorced, and Mantis entered the Avengers' lives during the Celestial Quest storyline. Mantis, now being single, dived headfirst into an obnoxious relationship with Vision, much to the jealousy of Scarlet Witch. This coupling was broken off at the end of the story, but nonsense like this is just one of the many reasons why I hated Mantis as a character back in the era of her original writer. The last one I want to leave you guys with for today is something interesting in my opinion, since it's not really confirmed and I'm curious as to what you think about it. So in the original Secret Wars event, multiple characters were abducted and put onto the mysterious battle world. At one point, Ant-Man's ex-wife Janet Van Dyne, aka the Wasp, struck a brief ceasefire with Magneto, and the two of them started swapping spit pretty much instantly, and the scene immediately cuts away. The next time that we see the two, Magneto can be seen creating a comb for Janet out of metal and pouring the two of them some refreshments. But before too long, the X-Men show up, and Wasp reveals that she was just going along with Magneto to earn his trust. Like I mentioned, this entire scene is incredibly vague since we don't see what happens in between the kiss and making the comb. So I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. Did Magneto and Wasp actually hook up, or did Magneto just create the comb for Janet who needed to comb her hair after an intense makeout session? Let me know down there in the comments below. As always, this video would not be possible without all of our supporters over on Patreon. Badasses like Sebastian Walker, Nate Keylock, Yosh Flores, Bonnie Davies, Ashley Donson, and Billy Lewis. Thank you guys so much, and you can see even more names of our supporters down there in the description below. But if you like this video, then why not consider watching another one, or even considering subscribing if you really enjoyed it. Hopefully I'll see you next time, and hopefully this video wasn't too clickbaity for you.